Welcome back everyone. So as you can see, I have the latest wave of vintage collection figures in hand. So I ended up getting these from GameStop because they had a release date of October 25th and I figured, you know, why not try that because my solid case from Entertainment Earth has a release date of January and I just didn't want to have to wait that long for these figures. Um, those ones will end up being my carded samples and a couple extras, but GameStop really came through. So happy to have these. I also got an extra HK87 Assassin Droid because I kind of wanted to paint that up for some of the color variants that you see in the show and while some of us might think that Hasbro will give us an army builder pack of that I just never want to put my cards all on Hasbro so I'm gonna make myself a custom but I gotta say that he's a fantastic figure has some really good articulation that's a little puzzling at first but once you get to know the figure he definitely poses like a dream so with that being said let's take a closer look at these card backs in each one of these figures and first up, we have the Grand Inquisitor on an Obi-Wan Kenobi card back. It seems like it was ages ago when this series was on, and we're only just now getting this character into our collection. The Black Series was able to get, you know, all the Inquisitors out, and this is something that Hasbro really needs to work on for the vintage collection. But regardless, I'm happy to finally have him, and here we have a nice image of the Grand Inquisitor on the streets of Dayu as the Imperials lock down that port during their hunt for Kenobi. So, looking pretty good there. Kenner logo down below, really like that red glow from his armor, and then this green name pill color is fantastic. Really looks good with the figure and that red saber, so all in all, some fantastic stuff. And then on the back, he is VC 293 in the line, and you can see the rest of the figures from this wave. So as I mentioned before, it's nice to finally have the Grand Inquisitor in our collections. I will definitely need one of these for my Kenobi collection, and also my Imperial carded display, but Regardless, very cool to finally have him. Taking a look at the Grand Inquisitor out of the packaging, I have got to say that Hasbro has done a remarkable job finally getting us this character into the vintage collection. He poses really easily and just looks fantastic. So very happy to finally see this one added to the line. And yeah, he's got all the articulation you're gonna need, the new style hips, you know, he's got rocker ankles, ball jointed this and that, swivels at the thigh. And of course, he's got the new soft plastic armor they've been using that doesn't hinder any of his shoulder movement. So that's really good stuff to see. Taking a closer look at the portrait, it's done well. Looks really good. Very close to what we saw in the Kenobi series. And a little bit, you know, kind of like the Rebels one. But I would love to see that portrait sometime further down the line. The only thing I think I don't like is that you don't really see the line detail that's on his alien species on their forehead. And that's a bit of a shame. It would have been nice if they added that. Maybe it was just too small of a detail and like, you know, the paint apps would have looked a little awkward. But it's still not a deal breaker because I think he looks really good, especially at a distance. He looks fantastic. Um, taking a look at the belt, some really nice paint applications there. And just the armor itself has some nice shine to it. Taking a look at the back, you can see this little slot that he has for his unlit saber, which is cool that you're able to actually put that back there. And that's just like one of those details that I really appreciate when they add. Especially, you know, when you have extra accessories like that, you want to put them somewhere. Of course, he wouldn't have both of his sabers, but you know. And then he has the soft goods cape, which is really nice. I might have to iron some of this out, but it looks really good. The color is okay. You know, I, I personally would prefer like a nice vibrant red, but I think this is closer to what we saw in the series. Um, all in all, yeah, he's a really good release and happy to finally have the Grand Inquisitor in the Vintage Collection. The Grand Inquisitor is another excellent addition to the line that comes fully loaded with all the modern articulation one would need to achieve the rank of Grand Inquisitor. The figure is able to easily hold the saber in a variety of fighting stances as he hunts down and eliminates rogue Jedi and Order 66 survivors. While the Kenobi series has come and gone, it's a relief to finally have this character added to our Imperial ranks, and I look forward to more Inquisitors in the future. And next up, we have the HK-87 Assassin Droid on an Ahsoka card back. One of the first figures that we're finally seeing for the Ahsoka series, and I've got to say that I'm very happy to see this Assassin Droid added to the line. I've been a big fan of this character ever since their first appearance with Morgan Elspeth in The Mandalorian, and this one just deserves to be an action figure. But taking a closer look at the card back, we have a nice image of the character, which I'm pretty sure is an illustration that's cleaned up and then put on a realistic background. Uh, we have that nice Dathomirian stronghold that you saw on the first first episode and just all in all it's a pretty good looking image and you got the Kenner logo down below with this nice lime green name pill color that just really pops with the figure just you know that looks fantastic in my opinion and yeah very happy to have this one added to the line and on the back he is VC 294. 
And as I mentioned, I'm just happy to see Assassin Droids finally added to the vintage collection. This one's going to look great in your display or your carded collection. Taking a look at the HK87 Assassin Droid out of the packaging, I have got to give Hasbro a lot of credit when it comes to soft goods in the vintage collection. They have been doing a fantastic job, and I really appreciate soft goods. Nobody likes those hard plastic capes. They just, you know, hinder movement, and this, you know, looks a lot better in my opinion. But yeah, taking a look at some of the sculpting, really good stuff here. This droid has a lot of articulation actually, and it's a little tricky at first, but once you kind of get to know him and like move him at certain angles, um, he does pose very well and he stands exceptionally too, in my opinion. See, no problems. But yeah, um, taking a closer look at his head, you can see that he has a little bit of a red paint deco there on his eye area. Let's just move his arms a bit out of the way and get that in focus and you can kind of see it. And actually, you know, that is accurate to the show. They really do have like more of a dark red, like visor, if you will, that of course it doesn't contrast super well here, but it is painted, um, doesn't need to be black. So that's nice to see. And the soft goods are easily removable. So that's pretty cool too. If you want to, you know, make a little bit of a variation, if you do get two of these, I know it's unfortunately just the red one, but you can do a little bit of customizing with it. Again, lots of great articulation here. He's got that soft plastic, doesn't hinder anything. You can really move his arms up. He's got ball jointed elbows. He unfortunately doesn't have a hinge. This is just a swivel, which, you know, we're seeing a little bit more of that sometimes. And maybe it's a little bit of a factory restriction. You know, certain figures can't get it because of like the width of the peg or something. But I prefer hinges at the wrist when possible. It really allows some better fighting stances, especially for like people who use swords or like lances and stuff like that. So something to consider Hasbro, but yeah, he's got the ball jointed knees, rocker ankles, which is impressive for a droid. He's got a little swivel here, which actually helps a lot in his articulation. Cause you can see that this kind of gets in the way. And unfortunately I kind of wish they would have done like the soft plastic, like up here. Maybe that would have been a little bit more helpful, but to kind of get the wide stances, you're just going to want to like, really turn it that way and then like you know kind of turn that thigh like that and just you know there you can get him in a bit more of a wide stance so it is doable you just kind of got to learn the angles when it comes to this guy but yeah very happy with him taking a closer look at some of the sculpting got some really nice metallic work there he's also not only got like a crunch up here but he does swivel that way as well which is always cool with these droids they can get pretty articulated and like really interesting in terms of you know how they sculpt these things taking a look at the back he's got a lot more sculpting back here a little bit back there silver on his neck and then he's got this peg here which you can put his blaster into so that is also pretty cool because i'm always for you know having a place to put your blaster and other accessories so that's really nice taking a look at the blaster really quick it is the same one that we've been getting with our battle droids which is not exactly what they use in the show it's very close and you know i give credit to hasbro for trying but i also would have preferred maybe the completely accurate rifle and one last thing i wanted to show is that the figure can grip the weapon pretty well in its other hand and then taking a quick look at the lance there's actually some really nice detail work on there and i'm actually pretty surprised that hasbro didn't give us any of those purple clear plastic like electric like accessories i think that would have been really nice to see on this but you can always probably take one off your like perch trooper or something like that but yeah really really good stuff here the HK-87 Assassin Droid is an absolutely stunning figure when displayed in a fighting stance. The figure is fully capable of achieving a wide variety of action poses, and while the hip articulation takes a little adjusting, the ball-jointed knees, swivels, and rocker ankles pull everything together. The figure is able to easily engage with all the weapons, creating realistic blaster and staff motions as seen in battle, and makes for a fearsome addition to any collection. And moving right along, we have our second figure from the Ahsoka series, Morgan Elsbeth looking pretty fantastic with this turquoise blue name pill color which I've always been a fan of they used it on the Scarif Trooper and the Imperial Tank Trooper from Rogue One and just it looks so good in my opinion and then taking a closer look at the image of Morgan Elsbeth looks pretty good I kind of think this is a promo image or something that's then cleaned up and put on like a background as well I don't think it's a still from the show but it looks pretty good Kenner logo down below looks nice popping on her skirt color and speaking of skirts she's got this nice soft goods one which looks fantastic 
really good stuff right there. And unfortunately, as you can see, there are no accessories with this figure, and that's a little bit of a letdown, especially because, you know, we saw later in the show she did have the Sword of Talzin, and she did have a bit of a face swap, if you will. Um, those could have been cool accessories to put in here, but regardless, it's great to finally get this character into the line, and I will be adding this one to my collection with the Beskar Spear, probably, because I have a few of those lying around. And then on the back, she is VC 295 in the line. And while it's a bit of a bummer that this figure doesn't come with any accessories, which is just, you know, uncalled for, she does look great and it's going to be a fantastic addition to our Ahsoka and just collections in general. And here we have Morgan Elspeth out of the packaging with the accessory she probably should have been packed in with. While, you know, I'm happy that they got her out quickly, I would have liked to see maybe this character on a Mando card with the spear and like get her out in time for the Ahsoka show. I think that would have been cool. It also would have given them the chance now to go back and do her with her Blade of Talzin look. So, and put that on an Ahsoka card. So that's definitely something, you know, that probably they should have like thought a little harder about. But regardless, I'm happy to have her. So let's get this accessory out of the way because she unfortunately doesn't come with it. Um, taking a closer look at her face sculpt, they've done that really, really well. Some nice paint applications and paint deco there. You know, it's impressive what they can do. I also think they did a really nice job with her hair. There's some fantastic texture there, a little bit of paint work, you know, showing some layers and just, yeah, they have really captured this character quite well. Also got some really nice detail on her like shirt and this robe and like these arms, like lots of really really fine detail work there got a little bit of paint application right there on that belt and then the soft goods fantastic i would have hated this figure with like plastic you know, skirt Ugh, would have been awful because she also has some really interesting tooling underneath so she's got the new style hips and these are all new legs which to me look very reminiscent of a certain character from the clone wars Asajj Ventress. So this makes me really, really hopeful that we will see an updated Asajj Ventress in the Vintage Collection. She was one of my top 25 characters that I've wanted for quite some time, and she actually won my SWTVC March Madness bracket because she's awesome. Also, these arms could probably be leverage for Ventress as well, so something to look forward to. So don't hate too much on this figure. Uh, regardless, you know, she doesn't come with any accessories, but she is a really good looking figure. It's got some good articulation. I think, um, you know, some soft plastic here would have been nice just so she can move her arms up a little bit more. But yeah, good stuff. And um, unfortunately, no hinge here either. Another swivel. So a little bit of a letdown there. But as you can see, she can hold the spear pretty well. And all in all, a very, very nice release. I'm very happy to see Morgan Elsbeth secure her spot in the Vintage Collection, and while I have wanted this figure since she faced off with Ahsoka back in Season 2 of The Mandalorian, she is sadly not coming with the Beskar Spear or any accessories, which many fans in the community are bummed about. But Hasbro has a second chance with her Blade of Talzin look, which would be an easy repaint of this figure. Simply tool up a new head sculpt and sword accessory and let's add this one to our collections. And next up, we have my favorite figure and card from the wave, and it is Grand Admiral Thrawn on a Rebels card back. The first one added to the Vintage Collection, and I gotta say, this one is simply stunning. Here we have a nice image of the Grand Admiral on Bryloth, and this is actually one of the first times that you see him in the show. They bring the Seventh Fleet in to like try to get Ryloth under control. Hera's actually sneaking back in to get her Kalakori. She's with Ezra, who's dressed up as a scout trooper, and on their way out, they kind of bump into Thrawn, and he's no fool, so he kind of figures out it's them, and, you know, it's a whole thing, but a fantastic image in my opinion. Looks really good with that Kenner logo down below, and I'm just very happy to finally have a Rebels card back in the Vintage Collection, and this fantastic update to Thrawn, who looks pretty good in my opinion. So, all in all, fantastic stuff. And then on the back, he is VC 296 in the line. And yeah, like I said, I'm very excited to finally have some Rebels cards in the Vintage Collection. It's been a long time coming, and this is absolutely a great start. Taking a look at the Grand Admiral out of the packaging, I've got to say that this is a wonderful update to our 375 collections. The previous versions just do not compare to what we're getting right here. So really good stuff. He's got his blaster that you see in Rebels, and he's got a really nice trigger finger actually right there that grips this pistol very, very nicely. Additionally, that 
blaster fits very nicely into this holster, which is something I don't like about the other Imperial officers. They're coming with that different pistol that doesn't really fit in here too well. And you do see other officers with this in Rebels, so it'd be a cool one to see, you know, moving forward. It just fits better in my opinion. But yeah, good stuff. And taking a closer look at his face sculpt, pretty dang good in my opinion. And it kind of does, you know, have that expression that you see on the card back. And while, you know, it doesn't match the Rebels version because that's animated, and this is a realistic interpretation, I think it's actually pretty nice. Taking a closer look, you have his proper rank badge, his code cylinders, you got the gold on the top shoulders for his Grand Admiral status, and just really good paint applications. You can also see some nice detail work here on his buckle, and just, you know, buttons throughout, and yeah, I'm just really happy with this figure. Something else to point out is that he has different pants than the typical officers we're seeing lately. He doesn't have those baggy pants here, these are the straight leg ones that you see in Rebels. And something else to note is that actually this articulation, or sorry, this tooling, allows him to be slightly taller, you know, than your average officer, because Thrawn was a bit of a taller character, so that's also some nice attention to detail. The only thing I don't like is that, you know, it's a little bit off-white, and if you take a look at the recent ISB officer that we got, yeah, it's a bit of a shame, because I like consistency in my displays, and you're going to have an Imperial display, and Thrawn's just going to look a little odd because for some reason somebody threw a sock or something into his uh, white's laundry and you know mess that up so that's a bit unfortunate in my opinion but that's kind of the only thing that's really you know hurting this figure other than that it's a really really nice update to our collections the seventh fleet carries a lot of firepower and earned its reputation through the leadership of this incredible new vintage collection figure grand admiral thrawn is just not any military leader while his strategy is without flaw he also can certainly handle himself on the battlefield and thanks to the impeccable fully articulated officer sculpt in the vintage collection you will have absolutely no problems posing this figure long live the empire and moving right along, we have our last figure in the wave from the Ahsoka series, and it is Ahsoka Tano herself. And while this figure is definitely a little bit annoying because it is a straight repack, I have to admit that this is a stunning image of Ahsoka. There's nothing like having her with her arms crossed, and it's like a still from the show, and just overall a really good looking card in my opinion. I think there's some things they could have done that made this a little bit more appealing other than just, you know, a new card back image. There absolutely should have been a different accessory in here. Something that would be really cool that I want to see with Force users is an included accessory such as Force Hands. And, you know, she's in the ship right here. Something that could have been cool would have been the cup that she moves with her hand and like a little Force Hand push. That alone would have been, you know, something nice to see. Not to mention, like, we've never seen her with unlit sabers. That would have been cool to see as well since, you know, they're displayed right here in the card. But regardless, I think this one's a pretty good addition and I will be opening it up and taking a look at it. And on the back, she is VC 297 in the line. And yeah, like I said, you know, it's definitely a little frustrating that it's the same exact figure. There's definitely things they could have done to make it different. Longer lekus, you know, different accessories. But... At the end of the day, I understand that they wanted to get more Ahsoka stuff out there, and this is a really nice card image, so I will be, you know, getting another one for my carded sample. And here we have Ahsoka out of the packaging, and the first thing that I gotta say about this figure that's very noticeable is the color. She is a lot more orange than the previous release. Here you can see that it's definitely a much more vibrant orange, which is probably a bit more accurate to the show. And, you know, when you take a look at these, they both look good, but... I gotta say, yeah, I think I, I like the more orange version better, personally. So, something to consider if, you know, you don't have this figure in your collection yet. But taking a closer look at her, paint application looks good. All in all, it's the same figure. I will say that it's a little noticeable that her arms are maybe a different plastic than the previous releases. They feel not exactly gummy, but just something about the plastic feels different. She also can grip the sabers a little better, so... I don't know if that's just because this figure's fresh out of the packaging or what, but so far I'm very happy with that. And then, yeah, if you're not familiar with this figure, she has everything you're going to need. New style hips, ball jointed everything, rocker ankles, and yeah, it's a pretty good figure. But I will say that they definitely should have included a different accessory in here. Force hands would have been fantastic. Unlit sabers also would have been great, but still happy to have another Ahsoka figure for the collection. 
Ahsoka Tana was originally released on a Mandalorian card as BC-222, and while some time has passed since that initial release, the figure still remains on the upper level of vintage collection figures. Fully loaded with the new style barbell hips, ball jointed everything, and rocker ankles, this Order 66 survivor will have no problems in this galaxy. Sadly, Hasbro did not include any new or unique accessories such as force hands or unlit sabers to really make this release feel special. And finishing off the wave, we have Luke Skywalker Jedi Academy on a Book of Boba Fett card back. And we have a nice image of Luke Skywalker and Grogu here in that bamboo forest, looking pretty good in my opinion, with the Kenner logo down below. And while we did see this figure as a deluxe offering recently, it is nice to get this one on a card back. I'm a big fan of Luke Skywalker cards, so definitely will be adding one of these to the collection. But like I said previously with Ahsoka, it would have been nice to see a different accessory in here. Hasbro, this is another opportunity where you could have put some force hands in here, and that's a different accessory that could have, you know, prompted people to buy an additional card back of this. So just something to consider in the future when you do this kind of stuff. And on the back, he is VC 298 in the line, and it's so exciting that we're getting closer and closer to VC 300. But all in all, this is a great addition to our Book of Boba Fett collections, and I'm happy to see another Luke Skywalker card back added to the vintage collection. Here we have Jedi Academy Luke free from his bubble and compared to the deluxe release of this character and they pretty much look exactly the same. If anything, maybe this release has a slightly more matte finish to his pants, but I think it just might be the lighting here and there. And the face sculpt is exactly the same. Same thing, maybe a little bit different in certain lighting, but yeah, you're getting the same figure here just with less accessories. You know, you're not getting the backpack, you're not getting Grogu, none of the frogs, none of that clear display stand. So it's kind of up to you if you want to get this figure. Maybe you didn't want to pay a deluxe price and you didn't get that figure with all the accessories. And, you know, you just wanted Luke with his lightsaber and Jedi training robe. So it's up to you with this one. It's got all the articulation you're going to need for some really good posing. And all in all, it is a really nice card back, so definitely a cool one to get, but I don't know. Once again, probably should have put some other accessories in here, like Force Hands or just something else to really, you know, make this a much more stunning release, in my opinion. Luke Skywalker in his Jedi training tunic is a very welcome addition to the vintage collection, sporting ball jointed everything, new style barbell hips, swivels at the thighs, and rocker ankles, Luke will have absolutely no problems performing as the powerful Jedi we have seen in both Legends and recent media. But this is another missed opportunity for Hasbro to have included a new unique accessory to make this carded release really feel like a must have item. I hope you've enjoyed this video and taking a look at the latest wave of vintage collection figures. Be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And don't forget to drop a like on this video and subscribe if you're new to the channel. It really helps and is always greatly appreciated. Thanks everyone and may the force be with you.